Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. My OBS recording was screwing with it. All right. This is uh Nordic Nevada. Right. So it's your turn. And the th the first thing you want to look at here is are you going to upgrade at all? And I think the answer is yes. Um, Nordic, you can only really get one worker to that mountain easily, and you're going to go to the right village is what you know. So basically this first action is going to be either a move or trading for some oil in all likelihood. Oh, you don't like... Uh, so what's the reasoning against produce and then trade for two oil and immediately getting an upgrade? Is it just not as good as go ahead and getting the worker on the village? Um, yeah, you don't need the you don't need the wood. Um, so why spend an action, a produce action, getting one oil when you can use a trade action and get two? That's fair. And you got to move anyway, right? So if you trade for two oil first and then you move, then you've got your trade action back off of cooldown just like that. Right. I'm worried about you with this 15 minute timer though. I'll go ahead and trade for two oil here. Um, going back to the the bigger question though, so so if we're not going for the upgrade star, then what is the overall sort of plan? Because obviously we can't maximize our income on this board. Mm-hmm. So innovative is a rush board, right? Innovative is almost always going to be... Um, by the way, what's your combat card? Two. Okay. Um, and what are your objectives? King of the Hill, so control the factory with the, have the highest power, or underworld advantage, which is control three tunnels. Underworld's your ticket. You're not going to get king of the hill with the innovative board because your bolster's overbuild. Um... Innovative board's almost always going to be mechs, objective, um, combat, combat, worker, okay? So this is where you can, you can go ahead and take your move action if you want. Um, get on the, probably the village and the mountain. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a, a reason to... Because we're already going to get one upgrade on our next turn, and it's probably going to be moved to deploy. That's what I would do. I would trade for one oil and one metal, right? Because you don't need that second um, that second oil to get your upgrade, and then your next produce will give you a mech. So since you're since you're always kind of looking here at um, at the same stars for the innovative board for the most part. The question is, how are you going to get them as quickly as possible? And the answer is, you've got to get on a mountain and you've got to get on on food. So what I like to do with the innovative board is I like to get to eight workers, move out into Albion's territory, split them on the, the mountain and the farm, and try to get as almost enough for everything at once with like one produce. But, and if, if that's taken... I like to go down and take the mountain and farm into Gawa's territory because if you can get a ton of food all at once, then you can start spreading out on the board as you're enlisting, which is really nice. But the only farm and mountain combination that's out there that you could access is those two tunnels, which is kind of a scary place to be. Um, and it would take a while to get there. Like you'd have to move and take the, mount, the tunnel village instead of the one you went to. Mass some workers up there. So I think what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to split the workers between this mountain and this farm. And since you've gotten your upgrade, you're looking at five total resources. The downside is you can't really move around a lot while you're getting those enlists and spread out early game, which would be really nice. But what you can do is you can get those, you can get a coin each time you enlist, which, which is nice. Right. So you, 
You still like going eight worker here? Uh, I wouldn't for this situation. Um, I mean, let's let's think it through. Um, if you win eight workers here, you'd have five on the farm, and you'd have two on the mountain because you're going to use one movement to move them down to the farm right, another movement to hop a worker over, and then probably the third to move your character to the encounter. Um, I'll stop talking and let you take your turn here. Ooh, balance uh, workforce. Yeah, you got it pretty fast. Um, when I'm just going to produce and deploy speed on the, the village. Mm -hmm. So we know you have th um, three produce actions left. Well, more than that. We know you have one to get you to four workers. Um, so let's, we'd like to time it up where you have the remaining produces will get you enough food to get all your enlists, which would be nice. I'm not sure we can get you there. But your next produce gets you to five workers and puts a metal on the ground, right? Yeah. And then you can go ahead and move at that point if you want and go five worker strategy, um, which means you just have a superfluous metal. Um, if you get lucky, you'll get food off the encounter, which would save you a turn. So then produce, enlist, produce, enlist. You'll basically have... Um, you basically have to do a dead produce to get your last three food for the enlist, which is not ideal. Um, this is just a produce, or uh, do last time. You produced uh, last time. Yeah, so um, I guess the big question here is do you just take a move action to go for the encounter and, and hope to get lucky on something that drastically speed up your game plan? Well, no, what I would do is I would trade for probably some oil right here personally and think about getting an upgrade on that enlist. Okay. So trade two oil and then do a... Actually, no, trade one oil, one metal. Do a produce, deploy a mech, and then trade for two metal next turn or the next time and then get your... Your upgrade. Yeah, something like that. So that probably should go ahead and do it though, you're at nine minutes. Yeah. I don't, I don't want you to time out. <laughs> yeah, so in this sort of situation, because normally how I've been mathing it is if I get to five workers, then I only need to do enough upgrades to get to uh so that the two bottom row actions I want to alternate between will equal five. So like here, the list is three, and then or deploy is two, and that would be five. And at four workers, or at five workers, plus the move actions available, I would be able to get two on the mountain and then three on that farm, and then just alternate between the two. Um, right. But you're saying that you like going for that other upgrade um, just so, like, so if I do the other upgrade, what would it be, bolster to enlist? Uh, yeah, probably. I would go bolster. If you get another dead turn somewhere in, it's nice to get three power instead of two. Um, yeah, that's what I would probably do. So bring us to five workers and then deploy us seaworthy. Uh, I'm guessing the mountain. Yeah, I'd put it on the mountain. If you put it on the village, you're just going to have to use one of your move actions to move it. Remember, you're going to move the mech with the workers down to the farm, hop a worker over to the mountain to get that second worker on metal, and then you're going to move your character. So if you put it on the village, you just, you're just you going to lose a move. My only worry is if Rusty decides to take both farms, or one counter and then the other, the other farm. Yeah, 
Yeah, that could be a good reason to put it on the uh, the village. You only have one combat card though, so it doesn't do you much good. If you're worried about that, put artillery on the mountain instead of seaworthy. I'll do seaworthy on the mountain. I don't. I don't think. Um, I don't think Rusty gets that much upside to trying to take both here. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't know what combat card I have. Right. So, if, yeah, if we do end up fighting and then he loses it, like... The other thing you could have done if you'd wanted is take Riverwalk on the mountain and then you could hit it, that farm space with two mechs. If you needed to. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, he's gonna be nice. Whoa, that was a weird play. So back to your question, the reason I would consider um, overproducing here, getting that next upgrade is, let's see, you're going to have, this next one is either going to be an upgrade or a move. I would do the upgrade first before the move, especially with the fact that Rusfiat's not going to take that farm. And the reason I do that is you're a lot more likely to get two food off the encounter, exactly, two food yeah. off the encounter than three. So you do the upgrade the next turn, then you do the move action. Um, now you have two mechs and no enlists. So two produces gets you enough, gets you six food, right? And yeah. your last two mechs. That's all the food you need except for two for one enlist. So that's just one more produce, one, one dead produce. Whereas you'd have to produce four times you were going to... Um, you were going to get it the other way. So that's why I was wondering about going eight workers here, to be honest with you. Um, because if you get seven workers on that farm, you've got enough popularity, I think, to... Yeah, especially with the enlists. With two produces, you would get 14 food. And that's more than... That's more than enough. That would have been enough without the upgrade, actually. But it, you'll, it, it'll be nice to have. Um, so you could go. But if you go that route, you, you're also losing coins. Mm -hmm. uh, for those produces. Whereas here, I'm debating between the bolster or the coin upgrade. Obviously, it's going on the list, but. The coin upgrade's actually a really good idea if you're going to go five workers, right? Because you're going to be enlisting but not moving. Right. Almost at six minutes. Go. You, you would recommend the bolster here, though? I always like having the bolster upgraded. It's a nice fallback. You're probably not going to use it with the innovative board, but it's nice to have. So when you're deciding, because this is one of the big questions I had, um, like mm -hmm. whenever I first started playing Scythe, is how many workers do you produce? And um, of course, there are some videos out there from all and go that say always five. Um, yeah, disagree. And so it's it's a matter of determining. I'd also heard that if if produce is not under or not above one of your desired bottom row actions, you always go eight, um, and that's kind of what I had been working off of because it, it kind of makes sense. But in a situation like this where produce is above deploy, um, it's interesting to hear that you might still want to go eight here. Yeah, so the reason I go, I really like eight workers with the innovative board, even though produce is above deploy, is if I can produce Oftentimes, players are too reticent to overproduce. They want the resources to line up and be perfect. It doesn't hurt to overproduce, and sometimes overproducing means you can move off of the resource you're producing, especially with the innovative board, start spreading out and keep doing the bottom row action. So 
That's the benefit of eight workers in this setup, is that after you um, produce two more times, get your remaining two mechs, then you can move do something else. Then you can start moving by that time you can be on the factory. You can start alternating between a move and a factory card and just start taking up over the board. That's when I have the most success with um, Nordic Innovative is with that early spread, kind of lock down the board around me. Because I could do a produce right now. Um, Your call. Since we, got the, since we got the upgrade, I almost feel like... I went into the move because... Um, if we if we do hit something off this encounter, that's good. Then, yeah, then it would have been worth it. I think. Oh, because yeah, we get yeah we get you got it. one popularity. And then here, um, I go enlist. Rusty is about to start enlisting. You have no combat cards. You're going to need them to get combats with uh, your low power. You only start with one. That makes sense. So, in a situation where you would have gone eight worker, would you still have gotten the second up the the second upgrade? Uh, so if I was going to put, I haven't actually been in the situation yet where I went eight workers stuck between Rusviet and Albion and unable to find a farm in a mountain somewhere else. The seven, if you had seven workers right now and two, you could produce, get a mech, have seven food, coin to enlist, um, produce, get your last mech, have enough food for the last enlists, move, take the character to the factory, um, like take like move to that uh, wood tunnel and then over to that lake to hide your food on the lake. And then could factory, go back and forth between factory card and move. So would I do the update, the upgrade? Probably. Um, kind of a dead turn in there though, isn't it? Yeah, Either way. Because like you could just sit there and bolster three well, bolster two power, I guess, in that case. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you'd done what you were talking about and moved, went ahead and moved, um, you had Seaworthy uh, by the time you did that, right? So you could have, when you moved the workers down to the farm and hopped one over to the mountain, I guess the character could have gone to the factory. Or no, the character was still on the home base at the time. Right, I'm, I'm saying if you... When you took the dead turn, oh, right. if yeah. you'd moved to the encounter, then when you did the last move, you could have moved to the factory, I guess. So yeah, if I was going eight workers, I guess, in hindsight, I would probably skip the second upgrade, produce 14 food, which is enough for the enlists not upgraded, and uh, get my character to the, rush my character to the factory. In this case, I I have the option to do a move action just to put my character on the factory. Uh, I would do it. You know what I would consider doing? I would consider sending the character to the factory and taking using the extra moves to take those mechs. Let's see, what's the power situation? What What are your combat cards? Three twos and one four. You might consider um, taking those workers and those mechs down to the farm tunnel. Um, that's going to put you right next to a village that doesn't have a trap token in it and isn't stuck in the top right of the bo board. So when you're ready to produce to eight workers, you're close to the factory, close to lakes, close to area you can spread out with. So if you're going to move to the factory anyway, and I would, um, you might want to take that stuff down there. Would you take the other 
mech. Yes, because uh, Albion has more power than you. Okay, so you'd bring both over here. Yeah, don't give Rusty an easy combat. And don't make it too attractive for Albion. Uh, I can't see your cards. Right, I'm looking at... Really, my choices are between combat card for three coins or popularity for... Actually, it's it's got to be combat card for three coins because the other ones are for pay two to gain a mech and power, but I don't think I want that Is one. Is there one where you pay popularity for something? There's pay popularity for enlist and pay popularity for an upgrade. Get the pay popularity for enlist. Okay. And finish your turn, and then I'll I'll tell you why. Okay, you've got two enlists now, right? But you only need to produce one more time to get your last mech, which is going to give you enough food for your last enlist. Um, you, what you can do is you can move once, get on the village, get that third enlist, and then you can factory card immediately and use it to attack someone if you want, or grab an encounter. So typically, the reason that card can be so good, and I'm kind of flying blind here a little bit, is that you can chain two bottom row actions just completely back to back. Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, you can. So this this next turn, what you can do is you can either go ahead and produce, get your last mech. It's probably the thing to do. Yeah, I like that one because it has the largest coin upside. Mm. By largest, I mean two coins. <laughs> the other alternative is probably to use the factor card immediately, but then mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like it. Then this mech I'm going to put on the tunnel here. Now, let's think about that. You're getting ready to move in a minute. Um, are you going to move all three of them, or are you going to leave one straggler behind? Uh, See what I'm saying? If you put yeah. it on the tunnel, then you have to move all three of them, or one's all by himself as an easy combat for somebody. And you're at three minutes, just why I. Um, because I'm probably going to move to the village... One to the village, and then two to, like, combat somewhere. Okay. Go for it, then. In terms of fighting people, it seems like Tagawa is the easiest combat. Yeah, that's... I think that's definitely right. So then one mech from the, f the farm tunnel to the wood tunnel to the, um, the mountain, two mechs go that way. Third mech takes three workers with it down to that village and probably the, and the food as well. And that's in list number three. And I guess there is another produce action, uh, the worker store. Mm -hmm. And then factory card, paying the popularity to get the last enlist, and then do a s spread, and then a combat, ideally on a tunnel, so that way I get down to world advantage. Yeah. Or you have the option of doing the factory for the spread, or you can also just do a regular move action at that point. You will have enough food um, if you need to double up on somebody, like Albion or somebody like that. When I fight Tagawa, do you recommend playing... My combat cards are five twos and one four, so... Uh, when I fight Tagawa here, he's only going to have two power. I could throw in... I don't know what combat cards he has, so I think I do have to throw in a four and a two and then... He can yeah. max at seven. So yeah. if you do a four and two and one power, you can guarantee victory. 
Um, thing to consider is he doesn't have Shinobi and he doesn't have the trap token there, so he's got a lot of incentive not to be knocked back. So he might call a bluff. Yeah. So you're at about three minutes on your time, so just be ready to do what you're going to do pretty quickly. Yeah, I realized I should have put. <laughs> yeah, like 20, 25 minutes on the clock. Yeah. So when you get the factor card, you're really thinking about which one speeds up your game the most, at least on a rush board, like innovative? Yes. Um, the ones I look for are the ones that can combine a bottom row action into a... And it wasn't... On this one, it didn't end up being as big of a deal, having to... We're kind of going on the fly pretty quickly here because of your timer. But... Um, if your move wasn't over your end list, what that card would have allowed you to do essentially is to convert a um, is to basically get both a combat star and the enlist star in the same turn. Gotcha. So here, I since I'm getting my last enlist from the factory card. I chose to gain two coins here. Actually, it doesn't matter. It's not like I'm ever going to reach tier two pop. With... So let's see. Albion cannot move the next turn, but he can move the turn on after that. So you can produce and go ahead and get the worker star and then use the factory card to move and hit Tagawa over there on the mountain. That's a solid option. Um, so if you get the worker star right now, Albion might hit you and knock you off. He has sword, so you'll lose two power if he does that, and you won't be able to artillery Tagawa. So, in that I don't case... Need artillery. Well, I will now. <laughs> yeah. I have a five card now, though. Five and two fours, so... I think if we fight... I don't need to be as reliant on power and more on... You know what you can do? You can go ahead and factory down with your character and attack Tagawa, which takes a um, combat away from Albion. Gives you a combat and gives you the bottom row action star. The character? What? What, the character? Yeah, the character. You can artillery him the and now out play here. a one in that five. Yeah, guarantee a win. Except you're gonna not be able to produce if you do that. If Rusvia upgrades, then we'll. Good point. You're probably <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here. Tied with Russ, even though he's in tier two. So now we start thinking about, you just need that worker star. Russ is gonna move, so you're bailed out. Yeah. So two turns, worker star, move to the tunnels. I'll be our, be our spread. Yeah, it'll be close on that time, but I think, I think we'll make it. The guy was completely screwed over. He's not in contention.
Yeah, for the next one, I'll put like a, a longer timer, I think. Um, I don't know if you want to do another one after this. But... I'm game. This has actually been really insightful because what I would have done is played a longer game, I think. Because I would have seen, well, based on my previous knowledge, I, I would have just seen, okay, I'm going to get five workers. I'm going to split three on the farm, two in the mountain, and then just alternate there for like a probably 18 turn game. But it might have been too late. I mean, took the factory, but it's okay. He's just at 38. So you're going to produce really quickly. Give yourself the maximum amount of time for that move action. Yeah. You don't have the cards to take the factory back, so you're looking at moving. I don't need that. Yeah. Tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. So you're looking at picking up. Actually, you have river walk now, so you can move one mech from the farm tunnel, to the mech that's on the um, village, to the farm tunnel, and then the mountain tunnel. And then you can move the one that's on the mountain to the um, wood tunnel, and then the uh, tundra tunnel, and then move one of your mechs on the mountain just to a lake or something, just to take some more territory. So that's a pickup of one, two, three, four, five territories. About 10 points plus a star. So that's 13 points that last turn. So it should be enough. Can Tagawa, it doesn't matter. Tagawa produces. This is a good game. You're going to win. Tagawa didn't have a move action available. So. Yeah, I couldn't. I can't see that because Tagawa was the host one for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, he had moved last turn to the farm. So you like picking up like one worker with a mech, dropping one off at the farm, and then moving the mech to the mountain. That's two, not even... two territories oh. with one move. Yeah. Then the one on the mountain drops one on the wood tunnel with river walk, and then goes to the tundra tunnel. And then for the third move, one of those doubled up mechs. This goes somewhere else. Ding. Or it could have been a worker goes somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, so 15 turns. That is, that is good. Nordic Innovative Sandwich between Rusty and Albion, 15 turns. That was... So... In that case, you have the boards kind of ranked in terms of speed then? Is that... So... Yes and no. So the innovative board is going to be a really fast board with a lot of factions. Um, the reason it's as fast as it is. Oh, I'm going to stop recording.